Hello and welcome to a new video about motor controller, NQTT motor controller. Now, last time we verified that this ESP32 can use this motor driver. This was good. Yeah. We learned that the analog outputs of this of this ESP32 is with some some counter, yeah. and we have to attach those things, and we can select different things and. Well, I expect that we are going to select quite a lot of things. Therefore, uh, therefore, I am going to uh, add parameters. All right, I want to store things which I might change uh, in parameters. Last time I always downloaded with different different frequencies. PWM frequencies and so on, I always had to download. Ah, this was not convenient. So today I will try to add the parameter that we can change it. All right, that's it. So I'm going to divide this in several files. So I'm going to add a, a header file, new element, header file, yes. And I'm going to call, I'm going to call this, I don't know, uh, IO pin numbers. What is this? CPP? No, this was wrong. Das Projekt Marken entfernen. Löschen. Clear. I want to have, not a module. I want a, a header the a header file, new element, header. This is what I want to have. IO pin numbers. Fuck. Here we are. IO pin numbers. Uh, this param ones, I really don't like it. For me, it's nicer if we do it like that. That we hey. That we say if not defined IO pin numbers, then we are going to define it. And then we have somewhere an end if. This means whatever is in between, we will only read in once. All right. And I will use those things here, these IO pin numbers here, because then I have them somewhere grouped. All right. Then I exactly see which pin numbers uh, I have them grouped in one file. I only have to, and here, instead of this, I will call uh, uh, include. I O pin numbers. Right. This is good. Everything should work as before. This we don't need. Gone. Right. Everything else we will change anyway. Okay. I O pin numbers I have. Then uh, I have a library written. I can, you can download it under this video and this library is called parameters. This will handle this. Parameters. Here we have. And this parameter is defining a parameter block. Params. And what we need there. What we need there, okay, here, an offset value inside the EEPROM, yeah? then a number of count, yeah? how many parameters do we want to have, and we can even give the parameters names, and this is exactly what I'm trying to do, right? So I'm also adding a new header file now, where I'm defining all those parameter stuff. Then I have, you know, I like to have these things grouped. 
and this is a header file and I will call it parameter info information all right and also here again we are going I'm going to use this combination instead of this param ones yeah I will call it here parameter info Good. So we have defining max parameters. I don't know how many there are right now. How many will we need? 20. Parameter numbers are the next ones. Define what will be the first param parameter. Ah, uh, what have we got? This this PWM frequency. This is zero. Uh, then define param PWM resolution. One. And PWM, that's it actually. Huh? What, what have we got here? The resolution and the channel. Ah, the channel. I don't need this parameter, but the resolution would maybe be fine if it wants to adjust it a little bit finer afterward than with 8 bits. All right, so that's this. That's this. Then. I need the names. I've prepared here a little something. The maximum allowed name in my in my implementation is uh, 70. 70 is the maximum parameter name. And here I wrote this like that, that we can see exactly how far we are. So here we can call it PWM frequency this is the name of the first parameter all right then the name of the second parameter is pwm resolution good and then we will do already spare ones We said 20, right? Two, three, four. Okay, we are prepared for 20 parameters now. And the parameter name. These are now the parameter names and these are going to be inside uh, an array. Okay. Constant array, nine. Here you see it is meaningful that we are using those those leading zeros because then we can clearly see what we have changed and what not. All right. All right. So these are the parameter names. I will also do it like that that we include this here. So what is the first thing we need? Ooh, the offsets. I will also use a separate, separate uh, module. Call them EEPROM offsets. Same logic like here. 
but with the At which offset do I want to start the the I don't know before we would need before also things like SSID. I also want to have this inside there. Uh, so I will just simply use 2000. 2000. From 2000. It's enough bytes in there. The ESP32 is a big one, yeah. So we'll use 2000. Okay, but now, <laughs> now let's start, yeah. So offset. Ah, we have to include this, of course. Offset parameters. Zack. Next one. Uh, parameter count, this was max parameters, and then parameter names, this was this, this thing here, parameter names. Int, int, should work. Ah, maybe I have to cast this. Alright, now it's accepted. I've casted this, now it's accepted. Good. Now we have the parameters. Let's see if this is still working. Power up here. Oh, it's already. Okay, we need to download. Yes, downloading. Okay, this is now working. It has compiled, everything is working. Good. So these parameters did not did not bother. Uh, now I do in first term I will do something strange. Yeah, I will set params dot set parameter, and now I have the parameter number. Yeah, and the parameter number is param bwm frequency, and we need a value, and this was forty. Forty dot zero, and then set params. Ah, turn off, turn off the power supply again. Then we can move resolution, and this was eight. Yeah. Now I'm writing this into the parameters. Yeah. I'm downloading it. This should be this should then be flashed inside. Still working. Alright. What I'm missing of course is this EPROM begin. Thank you. EPROM dot begin. This needs to be called on the ESP32. And uh, how many bytes do we need? You know, it's a simulated. It's a simulated flash drive, actually, on the ESP32. Now it should work anyhow. Let's download it once again. Working. All right. Step, step. Good. Yeah. Now it should be stored in EEPROM. Now I should be able to access those those things. Yeah. Now I'm not using I'm not using 
let's see. Let's simply make zero zero dot print. Parameter uh, frequency Let's see if this is stored uh, params dot get param uh, which parameter But before, haha, I will also do this. Parms.get parameter name. <laughs> and from this, then I will also get already the parameter name. This is how this is working, that I get the parameter name. Now the parameter name should be in buffer and here I also have to only have to print buffer. Good. And this time not the frequency, but the resolution. This, let's forget, there should be in now 40, 40 and, and 8. Actually, yeah, these are the things which should be in there, and I should get a printout at the at the serial monitor. You see, the program itself is not really uh, affected. The only thing I play around now is this parameter numbers and so on. That those things are really stored inside. Okay, downloading. Let's see what is the first thing we see. PVM frequency 40, parameter resolution 8. <laughs> it is stored inside the EEPROM. Yeah, good. So now, now I can change my program that we say here. resolution and frequency now it's the first time i am i am affecting my program right now now we are selecting this from the parameter from the parameter Yeah, it's still working as before. <laughs> All right, so I've set this now in the parameters. The only thing I need to access somehow the parameter uh, that I can. It would be convenient to type it in here, right? To type it in at the at the serial monitor, set parameter, whatever. 
this would be this would be nice. Yeah. Luckily, I have prepared something like this. Yeah. So now now we know how this parameter stuff is working. Yeah. You have to set the parameters, give an offset in the in the EEPROM where you want to have it. Thank you. Say how many parameters are maximum, and if you want, you can give parameters numbers. These are not even necessary. And then you can have, you can set set parameter or get parameter, or get parameter name, and you get all the stuff from the parameters out. And the parameters itself are stored in the EEPROM. And you don't have to uh, think about really much because this is. Uh, written the way that it would first read out the parameter value and then write it into the EEPROM only if the parameter value is changed. So if you're constantly writing the same parameter value down there, there it, this will not destroy the EEPROM. You know, EEPROM has troubles with writing cycles and so on. There was a video about this, you can watch it. Yeah, all right, so I have now parameters. Next time, we're going to add a line command you know, that we can type in and set parameters as we wish. Uh, that we yeah, receive commands from, from the serial monitor. There I have also prepared uh, something. Yeah. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.